So you've probably been watching Bryson DeChambeau in some transformational stuff and his single plane golf swing on the PJ Tour. But what you might be missing is that he's actually showing exactly what's wrong with conventional golf. He is mistake proofing a golf swing. Stay tuned, I'm gonna talk about how to eliminate the variables in your golf swing and simplify it down just like Bryson and Mo Norman. So there's no better feeling knowing that when you wake up in the morning to go play golf, so that you're gonna play well. There's no better feeling of hitting good golf shots down the fairway. Years ago, I was frustrated because I lost that. I was confused, I was frustrated, and then I met Mo Norman and learned the single plane swing. And so now, I wake up every day and I know I'm gonna hit it well, I know I'm gonna play well, I know I'm gonna have fun. So my mission today is to help as many people as possible Wake up every day feeling good that they're going to go out there and play great because of the single point swing. Hey, before we get started, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Click that little bell icon there to make sure you get notified anytime I have a new video. And give me a thumbs up if you like the video. Also, don't forget to check out my book, The Single Point Golf Swing, Play Better Golf, The Mo Norman Way. So for years, I've been talking about Mo Norman's swing. I've also been talking about mistake proofing a golf swing. What does that mean? It means exactly what Bryson DeChambeau talks about when he talks about range of motion and zeroing out the range of motion of a golf swing. Today we're going to talk about what's going on with Bryson's swing and how exactly why his swing is having the success and he's able to do the things he's doing and accomplish on the PJ Tour. It's also telling you, by the way, why golf tips and the conventional golf swing doesn't work. So let's get into it today. Now, one of the things that I want you to understand about the golf swing and what you're seeing with Bryson is what he calls range of motion. It's what exactly what Mo Norman did as well. They simplified the body's ability to move at, at high speeds and eliminate the variability of movement. Let me give you some examples of this. And we're going to go through, what I'm going to do here, I'm going to go through the sections of the golf swing, upper body, lower body, and arm motion. And I'm going to show you how Bryson and Mo Norman have zeroed out or eliminated all the variability in the motion. Now, why do you want to eliminate variability? Well, think about it this way, and this is why golf tips don't work. The reason normal, in the conventional world, golf tips don't work is because the swing is moving too fast. In other words, when you set up and you go to hit a golf shot like this, and you swing, no thought, no form of action can help you because the motion is going too fast. The only thing that can really help you is how you position the body before you move. This is where you see, and I want to call it a secret or not, but this is what you see going on with Bryson, what he's figured out, and this is what Mo Norman figured out 50 years ago, is that you can actually position the body to have less variability. Now let's talk section by section here. And I like talking lower body first, but then Bryson has a lot of stuff going on with his upper body, it's very important too. But let's talk about lower body. Now, when you look at what's going on with Bryson's swing, if you kind of look at what his swing was just a couple years ago when he got on the tour, and then today he's made some changes. Obviously, he's made some major speed changes. He's much stronger and bigger. Well, one of the things I like to see in Bryson's motion right now is the fact that he's taking this incredible single plane concept, the same thing that Mo Norman did, and he's added this physical element to it where now his athleticism and his size and what he's doing, he's able to add so much speed to the single plane golf swing. But one of the things that's changed in the swing, if you look at his swing a couple years ago, is he was much more narrow with his stance and much more rotational with his body. Now that he's added some strength and some speed, you're seeing him widen his lower body position. Now, having said that, I want to talk about how we can reduce the range of motion with the lower body and create a mistake-proof position of the lower body. Now, watch this for a second, because this is where conventional golf kind of misses it. They talk about movement, right? Rotate your hips, rotate your pelvis. What they don't talk enough about, and this is just across the board in conventional teaching, is how you can, if, if somebody says rotate your hips, you gotta ask the question, how much? Or when? or where, and all those things. Well, you don't have to do that. That is, that is not necessary. Here's all you have to do to get the lower body right, and this is exactly what's going on with Bryson, and Mo Norman figured this out as well. If I take the lower body, and I do a couple of things. 
One, if I turn the lead foot out, and now when, when I flex the knee, do you see when I flex the knee of, of the, the lead leg, do you see how because of that knee flex, it's limiting the amount my body can actually move? See, how it's a limitation. And then my foot, keeping my foot on the ground or keeping my heel down creates another limitation. So if you look at Mo and Bryson, that, they're keeping that trail foot down very close to the ground and this knee is now limiting the range of motion of my lower body. So they're, they're right there, range of motion. So look, that's the key to making good golf swings because if I can keep the range of motion within a limit, then I can't make a mistake. See, there, that's impossible for me to make a mistake on that. Now, the way you make a mistake is if you straighten up the knee or you lean back and don't go into a flex lead knee. So what happens is if you don't hit this position of the body, you don't limit the range. So all you have to do is keep working into a limited position, lead knee flexed foot down, and you've now have the pelvis figured out. Not, not that hard to do. Okay, so that's lower body. And, and by the way, what you're noticing there is because of that lower body position, it's actually creating creating a, a range of motion limit. And so what's gonna happen now is my torso, the position of my torso now can deal with a consistently moving pelvis position. This is pretty interesting stuff because now what you have is you have the, the foundation, the stability of the body happening, and then now the upper body can have, also have a range of motion limit. Let's talk about upper body now. So now the upper body needs to be tilted. So if I look at my upper body position, Look what happens now. If I go into that limited range of motion, see this position? And my body is tilted, watch this. See how it limits the range of motion? That's as, that's as far as my torso can really turn. So now I have another limitation. And, and so I don't know if I, can, if I can stress this enough, but what you're seeing here is range of motion limitation, range of motion limitation, and now it's hard for me to make a mistake because now what's happening is I can only go to this range. I can't go any further. That's because of the position of my lower body and the bend of my body is creating a range. That's it, I can't go any further than that. So now you've seen because of positioning of my lower body and the positioning of my upper body, I'm creating limitations of my range of motion. Now let's talk about the most important one, which is the lead arm position. Why is this one the, probably the most important? Because now it's dealing with the club face. How is my arm attached to the club face and how am I gonna return this thing to impact in a consistent fashion knowing, knowing the stability of lower body range and knowing upper body range. And this is where it gets really fun because now you're able to hit a golf ball and hit these range of motion limits and then at the same time when you get to impact exactly square the face to the perfect spot every single time because this is where a ball striking gets really really consistent so think about this for a second and this is one of the things when you talk about conventional swings this is why i, I think a lot of things taught in conventional golf just co completely miss miss it for example low and slow this whole low and slow idea makes no sense at all because look at what bryson's doing right now watch his swing there's nothing low and slow about that golf swing the other thing too that's missing in conventional golf is this idea of relaxation. I don't believe in relaxation. And here's what I mean by that. Look at Bryson's address position. Do you see anything relaxed about his address position? What you're seeing is he's creating straight lines with his arms and straight lines with his legs. So now he's able to engage his body into movement, engage his body into a rotational speed producing movement. There's nothing relaxed about that. But we have to talk about what's exactly happening with the upper body and the shoulders. So what, what Bryson is doing is he's basically, this is ulnar deviation. So if you look at what, my, what he's doing with his lead arm, this is exactly what Mo Norman did as well. He's put his lead arm into a fully ulnar deviated position. Well, that's a full range of motion position. That's as much as I can actually move my hand that direction, right? And he's also aligning the club face to the back of the hand. So this arm rotation now, you're gonna see when my arm gets to its full limit and range of motion, the face is square. You see how lower body stable, upper body tilt, and then now full range of motion of the arm squares the face every time. Look at that position right there. I'm reaching limits of my body. I call this the wall. You've seen me talk about this on my channel. 
you're hitting a wall, which is a full range of motion position at impact. So now I can become extremely consistent because what I'm doing here is I'm in full range of motion, full range of motion here, tilted, and then my body reaches a limit, which is right there where the club squares and, and hits the ball at impact. So my body is reaching these limits. It's stabilizing too. One of the things you see changed in Bryson's swing right now, which I really, really like to see, when he was, a few years ago, he was very narrow with his feet. Now he's wider. That's a stabilizing platform. Now he's producing more speed. He has more stability. He's also slightly hitting into a flex lead knee through impact. Now you'll see it straighten up after impact, but I really like to see the fact that his lead knee is getting into more of a stable flex position as he's getting through the impact area. That's a stabilizer. And I like to see that because it's allowing his pelvis to get a little more into its full range of motion. So I'm really loving what I'm seeing in Bryson's motion right now. And he's added power, which is a function. He needed the stance width to add stability to all of that power. So it's great to see what's happening with that golf swing. Now, one final element here that I want to discuss, which I think is critically important to this entire discussion is obviously the single plane. So I'm going to scoot down the line. Now, watch this, and this is probably the thing that most people see that is so different about Bryson's swing and, and Mo's swing as well, is that when you set these range of motions in the body and positions, so if I go into my, into my tilt and range of motion, notice that you're seeing the, the reaching of the arms. Just like Bryson, you see a very reaching of the arms. What you're doing here, and I want you to think about this for just a minute, you're creating space. That's the extension of the arms creating space. I'm gonna keep that width in space. I'm gonna return that width in space. So what I'm doing is my body doesn't have to lift, it doesn't have to shift, it doesn't have to go down. What it can do is it can literally stay in the same space from address to back to down. This is a spine angle issue. Think about it for a minute. If I can keep my spine, if I can keep it from shifting, I can keep the space here and I can keep the same space there. I can, keep, I can take it back and bring it back down. I can be ultra consistent. If the spacing is the same from address to backswing to, to impact and through, it's a spacing issue. He's not having to adjust for, for any angle that's been created like a conventional golf swing. So he's eliminated angles. This is what you're seeing in Bryson. This is exactly what you saw in Mo Norman. And there's no secrets here. The thing is, all they're doing is putting their body into a position that has eliminated the variability when you're moving at high speeds. Let me do a quick review on this because I think it's so important if you're gonna to try to take this out and do some of this in your own golf swing, that you not only get it right, but you also do it in a way that's gonna, that's gonna help you get the most out of eliminating variables. And I'm gonna go through this just in, in about a four step process, but notice how everything I say here completely defies conventional teaching. First thing is, I'm gonna basically eliminate the angle of my wrists. See that? I'm gonna put the body in a position to where the arms are straight, not relaxed. I'm gonna widen my feet to a position where they're straight and stable. My legs are straight, my feet are stable. I'm gonna turn my lead foot out. Now what I'm gonna do is from, I'm gonna tilt my body. So now I have a tilted position with my arms straight out. Notice that the club is pointing to the lead side of my body. Now I'm gonna keep the space and the width in the backswing stabilizing against that leg. I'm gonna move into a flex knee, re return the club to the, to the ball. Look at that space I have, it's the same space I have here. Stabilizing the lead knee, and I'm gonna swing all the way through and watch the swing here. And what you're seeing in that entire motion is eliminate variables, keep the space, eliminate variables, stable lower body, release through. That entire swing, I can swing as fast and as hard as I want because just like Bryson, the variables have been eliminated and I've increased my percentage chance of returning the club face to square 
So this is, this is where it's at. I've increased, the variable, I've increased the chances of returning that club to the same spot at impact because of all the angles and variability has been eliminated. Make sense? That's what's going to help you more than anything. And by the way, I saw a comment on my channel when I did some review on Bryson's swing, and somebody said to me, and I thought this was funny, he said, he said, look, the swing looks so weird, I'll just, I'll just keep those extra five shots on my handicap. Look, the swing, look, it doesn't look weird to me anymore. This is the only way to swing a golf club, in my opinion, and it's a beautiful thing to watch Bryson swing a golf club. If you're not loving watching that single plane motion of Bryson, you don't love golf, because that is absolutely the biomechanical easiest way to play the game and Bryson's figuring it out. So thanks to Bryson, we're all getting to see it on the PJ Tour. And thanks to Mo Norman for showing me 25 years ago.